of the 20th century, there existed a country in southeastern Europe called Yugoslavia. Today, however, what used to be Yugoslavia is now six fully independent countries, plus one more self-declared independent country, but more on that later. Armin Kahelik is a member of the British House of Lords and served as special advisor to Foreign Secretary William Haig from 2010 to 2014. He recently wrote about Ethiopia's current situation in comparison with Yugoslavia's political fallout, citing Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's remark against the TPLF clique. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed recently said that his country is facing an enemy, which is a cancer for Ethiopia. Helik translated this term as dehumanizing, immediately associating it to similar languages, which were a prelude to ethnic cleansing and genocide in Yugoslavia. Paralleling with Yugoslavia, he expressed his fear for the people of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a unique state in the African context. It has existed in a coherent form for more than two millennia, fighting off numerous foreign invasions. Ethiopians' quick reaction to his miscalculated comparison clearly stated that Ethiopia is not Yugoslavia, recalling the long history and a strong social bond of Ethiopians. In an attempt to draw a parallel with Yugoslavia, the author has failed to understand the socio-political, historical and cultural context of the country and its people. To begin with, Ethiopia and its people are known for their cultural and religious tolerance and have lived in harmony for many centuries. There exists no enmity among the people of Ethiopia. Therefore, comparing the country's current situation with the Balkans is a complete malposition. But he argued that, like Ethiopia today, Yugoslavia was a large, multi-ethnic state with a recent history of dictatorship, going through a period of political change, attempts to turn Yugoslavia into a greater Serbia and some of it into a greater Croatia by force failed, but only after four years of war, genocide, and the disintegration of the country. Thirty years on, he says looking at Ethiopia in fear that history could repeat itself. Ethiopian ambassador to Brussels, Hirut Zemene, became the first Ethiopian diplomat to respond to such analysis, saying it was both factually and conceptually incorrect. Additionally, without properly understanding the nouns of the official Ethiopian language or statements made by the Prime Minister with regard to the TPLF, the author has misinterpreted a label aimed at the TPLF as describing the compatriots in Tigray. Helik attempts to call for unwarranted interventions from the international community based on misinformed ideas. The Ethiopian ambassador made it clear that no Ethiopian official has incited ill intentions against their own people at the peace portrait. Back then, in Yugoslavia, it all began slowly, but deliberately, politicians whipped up nationalism to drive their cares and embraced war and genocide to protect their people at the ultimate expression of that nationalism, according to him. The missionary of a federal Yugoslav state was turned against a section of the population who were deemed wrong and the armed forces were used to kill the very people they were meant to protect. Fighting began in one region and spread to others. Atrocities fueled further atrocities. The international community, initially silent, eventually stepped in and froze the war, but only after they had proved at best incapable, at worst actively harmful throughout the preceding four years. Yugoslavia disintegrated into five nations. Today, after further conflict, the region is made up of seven nations and it is still riven by tensions and nationalist aspirations. In his comparison with the beginning of Yugoslavia's political fallout, Helik underscored the nine-month-long fighting, displacement, and humanitarian crisis in Tigray is similar with that of Yugoslavia. Throughout the past three years, no government statement that referred to TPLF has failed to underscore the difference between TPLF and the people of Tigray. Yet, the miserably ill-informed member of the British House of Lords shamelessly twisted the PM's remark and stated the following. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed drew a chilling distinction between Tigrayan Ethiopians and others in the country, describing the children of Ethiopia as wheat and his Tigrayan opponents as invasive weeds who must be uprooted in a manner that will never grow again. More likely, Helik knew nothing about Abiy's FAB post until the intentionally mistranslated version was given to him by a TPLF hireling with a request to pen a piece that would put Ethiopia and its PM in a bad spot. 
This is clear evidence how underhandedly the West has handled the essence and the factors of the war in Tigray over the last nine months. Foreigners writing terrible piece on a subject matter of or a country they know very little about is very common. Ethiopians have witnessed tons of them in the last nine months. However, this piece stands out in that it is a piece written on the basis of one deliberately mistranslated statement made by a foreign dignitary. More importantly, the political, economic, and ethnic conditions that led to the breakup of Yugoslavia are very different from the situation in Ethiopia today. In fact, one can say what Ethiopia is going through today is the direct opposite of what Yugoslavia went through, beginning the early 1990s leading up to its ultimate breakup into many states. In Yugoslavia, the inter-ethnic conflict was precipitated by one ethnic group, Serbia, taking up a disproportionate political and decision-making power. This was resented by the Croats and Slovens, who declared independence in 1991. The wars that ensued were the result of the Serbs-dominated federal government trying to keep the Federation alive. And when this failed, the subsequent attempt to create greater Serbia. In Ethiopia's case, TPLF ruled the country for 27 years, dominating all political, economic, and military power. What then happened in 2018 was the direct opposite of what happened in Yugoslavia in 1991. In Yugoslavia, the disenfranchised group decided to leave the federation. In Ethiopia, such groups formed a front and dislodged the divider. In Yugoslavia, the politically dominant group on the eve of the federation's breakup, the Serbia Communist Party attempted to keep the federation alive, while in Ethiopia, TPLF recoiled to its base, Tigray province, and earnestly started working on dismantling the country. The author's view of the TPLF's destabilizing character, expanding the conflict to neighboring provinces, demonstrated only an attempt to justify the actors of the TPLF as legitimate and even more so unjustifiably imposed sanctions on Ethiopia. Ethiopia thus not only rejected this enormous opinion but would also request that as a respected official of a reputed country the author refrained from comparing incomparable situations and calling for unwarranted action.